Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship's first Shabbat Hagalod service. Traditionally, this service is an expansive sermon given to the general community. But today, I'd like to just make this a short message to help those that are new to the idea of Passover and talk about some of the Kabbalistic symbolism contained within. In the Jewish tradition, which is, of course, are the remnant people of Judea, the southern half of Israel, they have a very lengthy service where they go over the story of the Exodus. They eat certain foods that have rich traditional symbolism. And if you enjoy that with your family, that's wonderful. On the other side, we have Latter-day Saints that don't celebrate Passover at all. They merely celebrate Easter. In my family, we do both. We celebrate Passover. We talk about the story of Exodus. And then on Easter, we celebrate also. We talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Kabbalah, at least in Mormon Kabbalah, the idea of Egypt is a symbol for this world, the wisdom of this world, the knowledge of this world. In the scriptures, when you're reading that Abraham and Sarah go into Egypt, or they come out of Egypt, that Israel goes into Egypt or comes out of Egypt, this is symbolic of the fact that we, in our journey, were not merely spiritual beings. We want to go to the Promised Land. We want to go to Jerusalem but we are going to have to spend some time in Egypt. So in my family, when we talk about the bondage of slavery, we don't talk about the Israelites building the pyramids because we know that the bricks of straw and clay that they built according to the Torah, that, that's not what the pyramids are made of and it's not the point. We like to talk to our children about the spiritual implications of what it means to overcome the Pharaoh and our slavery to sin. When we come to Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We're made whole, we're made perfect, but there's still wicked desires in us. We still have that Pharaoh in us, but we want to get out of Egypt. We want to leave Egypt and worship the Lord. But that Pharaoh inside of us holds us back. And God will send plagues that, in the eyes of Pharaoh, are devastating. But to the Israel inside of us, they are our means of escape. When we have that opportunity to leave, we leave all the worldly things behind. We don't have time for our bread to rise because now is our opportunity to come to Christ. And just as Kabbalistically speaking, all of our wicked desires were destroyed in Noah's flood and yet still come creeping back to us over time. The same thing happens as we follow Moses and he parts the sea and we walk on dry land. But those temptations, those desires of the flesh, they're still there. And there's a part of us, the Pharaoh and his army inside of us, that still wants these things. And so when those armies of the Pharaoh get deep into the dry land between the waters, the Lord drowns those desires inside of us. But we can't forget where we came from. We can't forget the bitterness of the slavery of sin. We can't forget the sacrifice of the lamb and the blood upon the doors of our hearts the doors of our minds, that helps bring us closer to God. Israel, Yasharel, 
straight to God. That's our goal. That's our destination. We want to flee Egypt. We want to flee the slavery, the bondage of sin. And we want to find that promised land. And there are all the rich blessings waiting for us. Passover happened and is celebrated because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. And I think it's important that as Israelites today, and as Christians, and as Latter-day Saints, as Mormons, it's important that we don't forget where we came from through the Passover and where we are now, thanks to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The atonement began in the Garden of Gethsemane, just as the Exodus began in Egypt. And just as there was a process of leaving Egypt and getting to that point to where the Israelites could wander for 40 years in the desert, Jesus had to suffer on the cross. He had to die and he had to be resurrected. There's no reason why we should feel that that should only be honored on the traditional Christian date of Easter. Because the Lord gave us a date and a time, the Passover, to celebrate not only the coming Christ, but the Christ that walked the earth 2,000 years ago. So why not take this year a week, start at the Passover and end at Easter, and remember the bondage of sin that the Lord saved us from, the Egypt that the Lord saved us from, through the mercy of Jesus Christ. Just as Moses put a serpent on a staff and raised it up to heal the Israelites when they were sick, the Son of God was also lifted up onto a cross. And it was so simple. All the Israelites had to do was look at the serpent and they would live. And yet there were those that died because they would not believe it could be that easy. And we have the same problem today. All we have to do is look to Jesus who died for us on the cross. But there are many who say it can't be that simple. It can't be that easy. But I want to bear you my testimony that it is. Because once you look upon the cross and you see Jesus Christ and you understand that he is the lamb, that his blood is on your door, you become a new person. It changes who you are from Egypt to Israel, from this world the fallen state to the creation of God. So once again, I bear my testimony to you. And I hope that this testimony doesn't reach you intellectually or emotionally, but spiritually. That Jesus is the Christ. That every holy day the Lord gave to us in the Torah, they're there for us to connect to one another through Christ. They are there to prophesy of the Messiah that came 2,000 years ago. And there's nothing wrong with celebrating the Christian holidays. Please don't think I'm trying to condemn them in any way. But why not take every opportunity we can to acknowledge our God, to acknowledge Jesus Christ and his role in our lives? That's my message for you today, this Passover. And I leave that message with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>